In this lesson, we will use what we learned about congruence and division, as well as congruence and arithmetic, to solve the following congruences for x. First, we have 7x is congruent to 12 mod 13. To solve for x, we need to divide both sides by 7. However, notice 12 is not a multiple of 7, and therefore we need to add 13 to the right side repeatedly until we get a multiple of 7. Adding 13 is the same as adding 0, since 13 is congruent to 0 mod 13. On the left in blue, I show adding multiples of 13 to 12. Notice it takes adding five multiples of 13 to 12 to get a multiple of seven, which is 77. Notice we added five times 13 or 65 to 12 to get 77. And since zero is congruent to 65 mod 13, we can add 65 to 12. This gives us seven x is congruent to 77 mod 13. And now we can divide both sides by seven. However, remember, when dividing by seven, we also have to divide n, which in this case is 13, by the greatest common divisor, or the greatest common factor of seven and 13. In this case, though, the greatest common divisor, or greatest common factor of seven and 13 is one. This indicates we divide seven x by seven, 77 by seven, and 13 by one, which of course doesn't change the 13. Simplifying, we have x is congruent to 11 mod 13. Now you might be asking what this means, to better understand what this means, we can use what we learned about congruence and equality, where a is congruent to b mod n, if and only if a is equal to b plus kn for some integer k, which indicates if x is congruent to 11 mod 13, then x is equal to 11 plus 13k, where k is some integer. For our second example, we have 84x minus 38 is congruent to 79 mod 15. Since all the numbers are larger than the modulus of 15, we can simplify prior to applying any algebra by adding and subtracting multiples of 15. 75x is congruent to zero mod 15 because 75x is a multiple of 15. We can subtract 75x from 84x. 30 is congruent to zero mod 15. We could add 30 to negative 38. And zero is congruent to 75 mod 15. We can subtract 75 from 79. This gives us the simplified congruence of 9x minus eight is congruent to four mod 15. Next, we isolate 9x by adding eight to both sides, which gives us 9x is congruent to 12 mod 15. To solve for x, we need to divide both sides by nine. Right now, 12 is not a multiple of nine because the modulus is 15. We now add multiples of 15 to 12 until we get a multiple of nine. And again, I've shown the work here on the left in blue Starting with 12 and adding multiples of 15, it takes adding four multiples of 15 to get a multiple of nine. 12 plus four times 15 is 72. Four times 15 is equal to 60. Since zero is congruent to 60 mod 15, we can add 60 to 12, which gives us nine X is congruent to 72 mod 15. And now we divide both sides by nine. But again, if we divide both sides by nine, we also have to divide the modulus of 15 by the greatest common divisor of nine and 15, or greatest common factor of nine and 15, which is three. To simplify, we divide nine x by nine, 72 by nine, and 15 by three. This gives us x is congruent to eight mod five, which we can simplify because eight minus five is equal to three. We can also express the congruence as x is congruent to three mod five, which indicates x is equal to three plus five k, where k is an integer. Now, if we did want to express the solution using mod 15, in some sense, there are three solutions, modulo 15, using three, eight, and 13. Notice three, eight, and 15 are the values of x that are greater than or equal to zero and less than 15. We can write the solutions using mod 15 as x is congruent to three mod 15, x is congruent to eight mod 15, and x is congruent to 13 mod 15. And now let's look at our third example. We have 20x is congruent to 23 mod 14. We can begin by simplifying the congruence since the numbers are larger than 14. We can subtract 14x from 20x because 14x is congruent to zero mod 14. And we can subtract 14 from 23 because 14 is congruent to zero mod 14. This gives us the simplified congruence. 6x is congruent to nine mod 14. And here we have a choice. Notice six and nine share a common factor of three. So we could divide both sides by three, or we could also try adding multiples of 14 to nine until we get a multiple of six, 
so that we could divide by 6. Let's divide both sides by 3. But again, remember, we also have to divide 14 by the greatest common divisor of 3 and 14, which in this case is just 1. This indicates when dividing by 3, we get the congruence. 2x is congruent to 3 mod 14. And now to solve for x, we need to divide both sides by 2. But notice 3 is not a multiple of 2. Because the modulus is 14, we can now try adding multiples of 14 to 3 until we get a multiple of 2. Unfortunately, this time it doesn't work. Looking at the work in blue on the left, if we add multiples of 14 to 3, notice the result is always odd. And since an odd number is never a multiple of 2, this indicates there are no solutions to the congruence. If we look at the original congruence of 20x is congruent to 23 mod 14, if we write this as an equation, we get 20x is equal to 23 plus 14k, or equivalently, 20x minus 14k equals 23. In this form, we should be able to tell there will be no integer solution. 20x is always even, 14k is always even. When we subtract two evens, the result is always even and never odd, like 23. I hope you found this helpful.